Thank you, Thank you very much. It's certainly a pleasure to be here with everybody. Um, so a very, uh, I think, a very interesting trial that I, I was involved in. Uh, I see my co-authors here. Uh, um, so I, I have no conflicts of interest with uh, with anything related to this. And uh, the funding was has been provided by a, a Citizen Science Foundation, more of a, a crowdfunding organization. So when we talk about using CTN geography to look at atherosclerosis, there's actually quite great data as far as how robust it is and reproducible it is. We can look at stenosis severity and find patients non-invasively who have significant stenosis. We can look at the number of lesions and see how many different plaques are present. We can look at plaque volume, which is going to be more pertinent to what we're talking about tonight. We can look at lumen volume and how much, uh, how big the the arteries are, and of course, uh, look for things like high risk plaques. And uh, using this this modality to track atherosclerosis is going to be uh, is becoming very robust. And I don't think there's a large pharmaceutical company today that's not doing a trial using serial CT angiography to see if their drug has an effect on atherosclerosis. So we undertook this study to look at um, this interesting population of patients who go on a carbohydrate restricted ketogenic diet um, and end up with a very high LDL cholesterol. And it's not typical. There's many patients with obesity or diabetes who have uh, uh, restrict their carbohydrates. They go on a ketogenic diet and their LDL gets better, their HDL and triglycerides get better, but there's a subgroup who are very lean, who have an extreme increase in LDL cholesterol. And I'll talk about the, the mechanism or the proposed mechanism in a moment. But these patients are, are uh, so what we we take these patients who are non, uh, they have non uh, uh, familial hetero uh, hypercholesterolemia. We we had genetic testing to prove that they had a normal LDL at baseline. They went on a ketogenic diet. Their LDL went up to over 200 milligrams per deciliter, and we and we uh, enrolled them in this prospective study. The prospective study is going to look at a one-year plaque change with LDLs above 200 milligrams or above 190 milligrams per deciliter on a ketogenic diet to see if they have more rapid plaque progression. What I'm going to show you tonight is the baseline characteristics. Their first scan after being on a ketogenic diet for 4.7 years, and we're going to compare it to a population-based study called the Miami Heart Study to look to see if they have increased atherosclerosis compared to matched uh, uh, patients. Now, it should be understood that lean mass hyperresponders are different than FH. While they both have very high LDL cholesterol, lean mass hyperresponders have a normal cholesterol if they have a normal diet. And when they're, they're on a low-carb diet, their LDL goes up dramatically. They are otherwise healthy individuals. These are lean individuals um, in general that we studied, and they tend to have this remarkable response of LDLs that go up. Uh, I think worldwide, there's somebody with an LDL above 1000 milligrams per deciliter, um, uh, induced by a ketogenic diet. FH on the other hand is a congenital disorder. They have high LDL through their entire life, uh, and it's unrelated to their diet. So we, uh, matched 80 of our 100 participants with an LDL above 190 milligrams per deciliter. They had to have high HDL and low triglycerides, matched one-to-one -one for age, gender, race, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, and smoking to asymptomatic subjects from the Miami Heart cohort. We couldn't match all 100 patients in our study because Miami Heart didn't have the same age range as we did, but we matched 80 patients to this Miami Heart cohort across all of these different uh, uh, values. We couldn't match them for, for LDL because, of course, these lean mass hyperresponders had remarkably high LDL. These patients had uh, documented uh, ketogenesis. They had uh, ketones 
uh, measured, and they had to have again normal or no no genetic predisposition or no genetic markers of uh, familial hyperlipidemia. These are the baseline characteristics, and there were differences, most notably, of course, in LDL cholesterol. Q72 average LDL in the keto group. Miami Heart Group had an LDL of 123. All the other variables were well matched. Um, uh, as best we could match these these two different populations. So when we looked at these population, they were both 55 years old. Uh, again, the uh, lean mass hyperresponders had an LDL of 272 milligrams per deciliter on an average of 4.7 years duration. So it wasn't like this was one week of being having an LDL that, this high. This was a, almost a five-year duration of having a ketogenic diet and an LDL above 190 milligrams per deciliter. When we compared them to patients with more normal uh, LDLs, LDL mean LDL of 123, there was no difference in coronary plaque burden. So we did not see any uh, evidence that this LDL of 272 induced more atherosclerosis over this five-year period. We looked at calcium score, we looked at total plaque score on the CT angiogram, and neither of them showed any differences whatsoever. There was no relationship between LDL cholesterol and elevations in uh, uh, presence of plaque. When we look at the calcium scores between the groups, again, 80 patients in each cohort, there was no difference in calcium scores. There's no difference in total stenosis score. In other words, how many stenotic vessels they had. There was no difference in total plaque score and no difference in the number of segments of plaque that were involved uh, with their uh, arteries. So they had exactly the same plaque characteristics as a population of patients who did not have an LDL above 190 milligrams per deciliter. When we look across the different cohorts, you can see LDL. Um, uh, up and down, and the uh, plaque distribution in, in green, there was no difference between these two groups. As a matter of fact, the area under the curve was identical. So there was absolutely no increase in plaque uh, between the lean mass hyperresponders with an LDL cholesterol of 272 milligrams per deciliter and the Miami heart population, which had an LDL cholesterol of 123 milligrams per deciliter, again, matched across all other variables that we could match. When we looked at the uh, total plaque score, how much plaque they had in their coronaries compared to their LDL, this is now stratified across LDL, and we can see total plaque score, no difference across LDLs going up as high as 600 milligrams per deciliter, and no relationship in either the keto group on the left or the Miami heart group on the right. So these two groups had very, very similar um, uh, um, plaque distributions, and there was no significant difference between the two. So what's the proposed mechanism? Well, we know that in lean, metabolically healthy subjects, carbohydrate restriction will lead to uh, a, a glycogen depletion in the liver, and we think that that leads to a lipoprotein lipase-mediated turnover, which increases LDL. And you can see at the very bottom here that more LDL-mediated VLDL turnover leads to a higher uh, um, uh, export of VLDL. When you have more VLDL and lipoprotein lipase, you end up with more HDL and more LDL and less triglycerides. You, you process that VLDL, you convert it into, LD, into uh, LDL, uh, VLDL, you convert it to LDL cholesterol, and you end up with higher levels of both HDL and uh, LDL cholesterol. So we think that it's all lipoprotein lipase mediated. Obviously, this needs more evaluation, but in a lean person, the the body switches its energy model to a more uh, uh, to uh, activate lipoprotein lipase. When we looked at um, a cohort of patients, so you could say, well. This is not really a fair analysis. We're looking at five years of high LDL versus a lifetime of high LDL. But I want to show you this population of patients from Denmark. In Denmark, they studied patients with coronary calcium scores. These were 11,800 patients with LDLs above 190, very similar to what I just presented. And you'll see 
that more than 50% of these patients with a lifetime LDL above 190 did not have any coronary calcium. So not all LDL automatically promotes atherosclerosis. And if they have no coronary calcium, their hazard ratio for having a high LDL was one. There was no increased risk of having a high LDL in the setting of no atherosclerosis. So I don't believe that all atherosclerotic plaque, is, uh, that all LDL is necessarily pathological. So our limitations, we only had 4.7 year follow-up. The sample size was only 100 patients. We're going to study these patients at one year uh, follow-up for CT angio, and then hopefully longer term as well. And of course, we did not have hard CV outcomes, but I'll just conclude by saying that these patients with metabolically healthy co cohort of lean mass hyperresponders did not have greater atherosclerotic burden than participants matched with more normal LDL values. And there was no correlation in this co in study between LDL cholesterol and plaque burden. So with that, I'll stop and thank you all very much.